Welcome to In My Feelings, a safe space to talk all things NBA. I'm your host, Big Waz. Let's go. All right, folks, let's get right into factor feelings. The Celtics' performance in the postseason should alarm their fans. Guys, <laughs> this is feelings, man. Like, I get it. This team was basically crowned to be the 27 Yankees coming into the year. Obviously, everybody lauded the trades for Chris Stapps Porzingis, for bringing in Drew Holiday. I get it. There was a lot of expectations placed on this team. Everybody sort of expected some kind of dominating run. Perhaps at 0-1 Lakers. Basically, the Lakers went 15-1 or something ridiculous like that in the 2001 postseason. And, and I get it. People were looking for something like that. The expectations were a bit overcooked and overdone. And I know people are going to say, but was they played a Jimmy Butler list heat team got pants in game two in a very disturbing way. Guess what? They came back, took care of business, blew them out the rest of the series. They played a Cavs team that was, you know, a little bit more game, obviously, but even the Cavs was were missing Donovan Mitchell for a sizable portion of that series. Shouldn't be worried about that. And the Pacers, of course, nobody thought they were going to have some incredible run through this postseason. And for them to play Boston in the manner that they did, I understand why some people are like, oh, we should be worried. But guys, this isn't a goddamn beauty pageant. It's the NBA playoffs. The name of the game is to survive and advance. They've beaten the opponents that have been put in front of them. That's a one. Two, they've done it basically without Chris Tapps Porzingis, who has been instrumental to the level that the Celtics have stepped up to since he's played with them this season. And he's coming back. Folks saying that he's eyeing a game for Memorial Day comeback. And so I'm, I'm just of a different opinion here. Maybe folks will say, well, you weren't as high on them. Sure, my expectations weren't crazy, but I don't think this team has proven that they are wholly incapable of beating the Pacers. Obviously, nobody's saying anything that ridiculous. And I don't think they've been proven to be wholly incapable of beating the Dallas Mavericks um, should they advance out of the West or the Minnesota Timberwolves. I, too, have been less than impressed by Joe Mazzula's coaching. Game one, the amount of times Al Horford sitting in a damn drop coverage against a freaking Halliburton pick and roll. I mean, they utterly abused Al Horford in the fourth quarter on both switches and in his just regular pick and roll drop coverage. That was not encouraging, but these are things that can be fixed and there's help on the way. And obviously nobody thinks that the Pacers are more talented and therefore should win this series. I think they're in a great position to get to the finals. And again, it needs to be acknowledged. And this is part of that conversation, right? The Wolves, the, the level of competition, beating last year's champion, beating KD, Devin Booker, and the Phoenix Suns. Like, their resume in the playoffs has been better. Same can be said for the Mavericks. They played much stiffer competition than the Boston Celtics have. I understand this argument, but I do not think head-to-head -head, when the Celtics, what I think inevitably will happen, end up in the NBA Finals. They're going to be hyper-competitive. They're going to be right there. Nobody should be crying about their performance this postseason. We're going to do a vibe check about the general direction of the league. Uh, dedicated listeners and viewers of In My Feelings will remember earlier in the season, I think it was around an all-star break where I talked about the future of the NBA and its stars. Who's going to carry this league forward, man? And I got to say the future is looking fantastic. One, I don't know how he did it, but Adam Silver damn near tripled the TV rights of the next NBA deals. And so NBC, ESPN, and Amazon are going to be carrying the league going forward. They got a crazy lucrative deal for all of that. So the financials, are stowed away, that's taken care of. Everybody's happy on both management and labor player side. But man, the future of the players, the guys that actually do the work of making this league what it is, isn't as bright as can be. This conference finals is so, so such proof of that, if not the entire playoffs as a whole. 
there are zero MVP recipients on either side in this com these conference finals. The only guys that are like prominent players who you could say are like of the quote unquote old guard are guys like Al Horford and Kyrie Irving. Everybody else who was going to have their imprint on this series, man, Tyrese Halliburton, the two Jays in Boston, Luka Doncic, obviously Anthony Edwards, Carl Anthony Towns. These guys are making their bones this postseason. And I just think it's incredible, man, that the way the NBA is headed, the way they've structured the salary cap in terms of this second apron. And now that you can't just stack up on your talent and, you know, sort of the, the onerous penalties associated with trying to build up a super duper stacked roster. I, I just think it's dope. And I think the coolest thing is that we go into every single postseason now where it is less predictable, man, where it, it does become sort of like an NFL where you can't be completely sure who the champion is going to be on a year to year basis. And I understand that a lot of people do love dynasties. They do love having a team that is clearly the one that needs to be taken down and taken off the pedestal. But I think this new model where you never know where the champion is going to come from. You never know who's going to be the actual, you know, contenders going into each playoffs is a new model. And I look forward to seeing how this thing plays out. I just think it's incredible that we're going to watch Luca and Ant Edwards square off for the right to go to the NBA Finals in 2024. Nobody would have predicted this going into the season. I certainly did. I, I thought the Nuggets and, and either the Celtics or the Bucks were going to come out of the East, right? And again, even with the Bucks, you're talking about Giannis, MVP, already won a championship. So I, I was even thinking old guard in that regards. And so, man, I just love the direction that the league is going in. These guys are not only great players, but the type of personalities that it's easy to, for fans to get invested in and not just get invested in in terms of rooting for. Halliburton, my God, is he hateable. Oh my goodness, Nick fans will not stop talking about how much they want to see that guy get crushed. Luca, another super villain. Ant Edwards, again, he's likable now, but trust me, the hate is going to come from fan bases who still have to start rooting against him. And so on both directions, how likable these guys are and how, you know, these guys are dogs, man. They're going to get both their fans and opposing fans invested in the outcomes of these games. And, and Adam Silver, man, I've been as critical as anybody of this guy, but I'll be goddamn if he don't got this thing rolling in a nice direction right now, man. So shout to the future of the league. All right, listen, guys, before we get out of here, man, we don't call this show In My Feelings for no reason because on this show, we're going to keep it a thousand and we're going to tackle the quote unquote hard subjects. You guys listen to this show. You guys know that I've been in the tank for the Denver Nuggets for two solid years now. If you listen to group chat, you know that I've been riding for this team for a minute now. I think the Nuggets in the regular season are picking their spots and haven't put the pedal to the metal, but they've still got to be the outright favorite in the West. Um, And so, yeah, it did kind of hurt me to see them lose in the playoffs in the fashion that they did. And a couple of things that, you know, kind of struck me. One, man, repeating is freaking hard. You just lose a little bit of your edge. It's easy to become a little bit more complacent. It's easy to rest on your laurels. It's understandable. It's only human that guys, you know, sort of rest, you know, just sort of chill and get into chill mode. And they ran up against a team in the Timberwolves that I think, you know, were just freaking hungry. These guys just wanted it. And, they, and I think they wanted it from the start of the season. I think they believed in their potential as a team. And, uh, you know, th them be the breaks. That's sports. That's why we love this stuff. That's why we watch this stuff. Rolling it into next season, I think some people will say it was a mistake for them to rest on their laurels or call it hubris that they thought that a guy like Peyton Watson and Christian Brown could man the bench units and Reggie Jackson could fill in where he needed to and maybe they could get something out of Zeke Naji and, you know, Justin Holiday. even his corpse got dug up somehow in the second round of the playoffs. I would agree that they might've gotten bitten from taking that course of action. I think they will be smart to try to shore their bench up, uh, try to shore up more ball handling behind Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic next year. But make no mistake, they still have the best player in the league. They still have 
one of the most complimentary cores in the NBA. Like, these guys play, like, as if they're one mind meld. Jamal Murray was a bit hobbled. I think there's something, to, honestly, to monitor and be worried about. There's a guy coming off of ACL. He's had hamstring problems in the past. This year, it was a calf. I think that's definitely something to be monitored and to think about. But I don't think it's something to panic about. I think they'll be right back into the thick of it next year. But make no mistakes, you know, your boy was in his feelings when they lost the other night and and you know I'm 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 sad that they won't be in the conference finals I'm sad they won't get to take down the Boston Celtics in the NBA finals but I think they'll be back next year and they'll be pretty damn good anyway all right, folks, that was our show for today. Make sure you subscribe to the Ringer NBA's YouTube page. Please hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and make sure you hit that notification bell so that you're notified every single time In My Feelings drops. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.